From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impe Presents. What an exciting and enlightening program we have for you today. And this first headline certainly catches my attention, believe me. Russia, China, going together. And where the, does the U.S. fit in? That's a headline. Russia, China, where does the U.S. fit in? Whoa. People are wondering about the United States and exactly where we do fit in, but Jack's going to address that in just a moment. And then secondly, ISIS, gaining ground in Libya. Oh, my heart goes out to them. And then Netanyahu says Israel fighting to the death against terrorism. He's standing up. He's saying we're not going to just lie down and let them take our country from us. We will fight to the end. Now, you remember last week Jack said that he would be bringing us uh, once again his thoughts about Russia. In fact, I told you last week that um, the first time I ever heard him speak, he was speaking on the coming war with Russia. I'd like for you to see on the screen right now, he made a record out of this years and years ago. Woo! See why I thought he was handsome? Doesn't he look good there? The coming, Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> the coming war with Russia. Where? When? Why? According to the Bible. And he's had the Bible in his hand ever since I've known him. He's not going to speak unless he uses the Bible. So, Jack, uh, the coming war with Russia, are we really going to have a war? Oh, Rexel, I've preached 801 week church crusades and then 250 mass citywide endeavors to 10 million people. I deliver this message in every major city of the United States of America. Hundreds and thousands came to know Christ. And I want to tell you something. We are definitely going to have a war with Russia. But here's the amazing thing. What I've been telling the world for all these years, for the first time, everything I predicted is now in line and waiting to go for the great battle of Armageddon. And that's Revelation 16, 16, which the Bible calls World War III. And even the Muslims have what is called Muhammad's Armageddon. Well, let's just see this for a moment. Where is it found? Ezekiel 38 and 39. And it's the war of the latter years and the latter days. Ezekiel 38 verses 8 and 16. So it's not something that was supposed to be fought back then, but as we come toward the coming for Christ, I'm going to tell you something. We won't be here for that horrendous battle because in Revelation 3, 10 says, our God says, I will keep you out of, that's the Greek word, ek, out of the hour of testing, this war with Russia that comes on all the world. We're going to escape it when he says, come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and we go up in 11 one hundredths of a second, the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, so just sit down now and be at peace. But it's coming for the rest of the world. Now, in Ezekiel 38, verses 1 through 4, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. The first word you see there is Gog. That is, probably could be Putin. He is the leader of this place called Magog. Now, the Scythians are given the credit for populating Russia, and they were called Magog, or Magogites, by the Greeks. And the chief prince there is Rosh Prince, or Russia, or Russia in Greek. No doubt about it. Modern versions carry the term Russia. And it's Russia of Meshach, 
Moscow, and Tubal, Tobolsk. Now, Tobolsk is southwest of Siberia. And so here we have all of this particular part of the world covered. It's going to be the biggest war in history, atomic. And God had me preach this all these years. And we've lived to see every detail. Now, uh, let's go on there for a minute, Rex. Yes, we certainly will, Jack, with everything going on in the world. We need to be aware of what is going on and share with others what's going on. Are we really approaching the World War III, maybe the Battle of Armageddon? Take a look, please, at this first headline. Islamists gathered to fight Muhammad's promised Armageddon. Now, you know what, folks? In Syria, 140,000 people already been killed, some under just awful, incredible, gruesome circumstances. And you know what they called it? A slaughterhouse for Christians in the three-year war. Oh. Storm warning, are we in the countdown to World War III? And then the King of Jordan at the United Nations struggle against outlaws of Islam is a third world war. You see this, friends? Everybody's talking about a third world war. And then the chief rabbi of Moscow, we're facing a religious world war. Everyone's talking about a world All war. All different religions. Yes. Well, you know what, Jack? I want to ask you something. They're talking about World War III. Could this really be the one that leads to Armageddon. Oh, it, no doubt about it. Now, why? And I've preached this for over 60 years. In Matthew 24, verse 3, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Tell us when shall be these things? What shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Now, it's not the end of the world because the world will never end. Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3, 21. Ministers have had that all wrong for a long time. This world is going to go on forever with Jesus ruling and reigning first for a thousand years and then forever here on terra firma on the earth. So sleep well. The world will never end. All right. But he said there shall be wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. Iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. But then he said something unusual in verse 32. He says, learn a parable of the fig tree. Hmm. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you see all the signs of Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and Luke 17 and 21, then know that my coming is near. Armageddon's about to happen, even at the door. Now you say, how do you know that? He says, the fig tree is going to blossom. Who's the fig tree? The Bible interprets the Bible. Joel 1, 7, Israel. They have barked and stripped my fig tree. Talking about persecution. Hosea 9, 10. I saw my fathers, the Jews, as the first ripening in the fig tree. So he said, watch for it, because when the fig tree blossoms, I'm coming. Now, get this. This is interesting. In 70 AD, the Romans went to Jerusalem and took all the Jews away. For the next seven empires in history, they were under control, captured. They could never go back. And so from 70 AD until the British released them in our generation, they had never been home again. They could not call themselves Israel. They were not Israel. They were prisoners in different empires. Now wait. Something happened in 1948. The Jews came home and they raised the six-pointed star of David and says, here we are after 1900 years and we call ourselves Israel. And in the Six-Day War, they took over Jerusalem. Now, what's so important about that? World War III, Armageddon, is when Israel is invaded. It's mentioned 18 times, as you're going to see in a few minutes. And the whole thing is over, the Jews getting Jerusalem back. Now, that has never happened for 1,900 years. Nobody lived to see it. And Jesus said, when you see these two things, all the signs, when there's an Israel and they're trying to get Jerusalem back, that's when I'm coming. We 
are the generation. No ifs, ands, or about it. Hallelujah, we're soon going up, so sleep well at night. You know, Jake, I have a picture here that I'm going to put on the screen right now just uh, because of what he just now said. The state of Israel is born. Of course, that was 1948, and then they took over Jerusalem in 1967. Well, you know, that leads to a lot of things, doesn't it? It says that when you see that, that's the beginning of all these prophecies that we see around us right now, the fulfillment of them. And then that means that they really, really mean something. The coming of the Lord is very, very near. Now, in a recent intelligence briefing, Jack asked a very good question. I'd like for you to see that question on the screen, if you would, please. Intelligence briefing by Jack Van Impey. Putin, leader of the world, oh, are you kidding? Russia. Is Washington's time up? Russia should lead the world, not the United States. Oh, my word. That is so serious. We used to be number one in the world. Are we now? Russia built up in Syria worries the United States. Yes, absolutely. And then going on, more than a dozen countries ensnared in Syrian war. And Russia ramping up military drills to Cold War levels, NATO says. Well, you know what? They're getting stronger and stronger. And our military is going down, down, down. Russia building a powerful new early warning radar network. Well, you know, Jack, you have always said that Russia and China would go together. There they are, pals. A warming relationship in East could give West a cold shoulder. Russia, China, and where the United States fits in. Where do we come in there? And U.S. Admiral China to have nuclear missiles on subs very soon. Chinese president calls for creation of a Palestinian state. Well, Jack, would you like to elaborate on all this? He said years ago that Russia and China were going to go together mm -hmm. and that they would be the number one um, power in the world. Jack? Daniel 11:44. tidings trouble out of the east and out of the north shall come against Israel. The east, of course, is the Oriental nations. Now, that's Revelation 16:12. They're coming from the east, and they're crossing the Euphrates River area on dry ground. Come on now. And by the way, ISIS is stationed at that very place. That's their headquarters. And so they're going to have a big part in Armageddon. But China comes down. Now get this. How can they come across on dry ground? Turkey. And that's Ezekiel 38.6, has invented the Anatolia Project. And that is 22 dams, and they push a few buttons, and the river Euphrates to rise up. And so for the first time in world history, they can come across on dry ground and their way down to get the Jew in his homeland. Wow. No doubt about it. And that battle is described in... Revelation chapter 9, verses 14 to 18. This is Armageddon, and Isis is there. Listen to this. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was a third part of men killed. Fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. We'll see more of that in a moment. Yes. It's all here. But the all the minor nations, the Muslim nations are coming into it. Let's get into it, Rexella. Right, Jack, you know what? We all know <laughs> that we've just made quite a deal, a nuclear deal, with Iran. Uh, take a look, if you will, please, at some of the participants that made that deal with Iran. There they are. Oh, my, oh, my. And then going on, there's Germany and China and all the rest. And there is U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. Of course, he had an awful lot to do with that. And then the cleric, U.S. Iran's number one enemy, despite the nuclear deal. Uh, oh, my word. They're our number one enemy, despite our deal. And then Khomeini. Now, he is the head clergy of Iran. The Americans are trying to destroy Islam. Oh, my. And then Iraqi columnists. ISIS terror is based on Islam. My, that's quite a statement also. 
Khomeini, he speaks again. Iran never trusted the West, seeks closer ties with China. Well, that's what Jack's been saying. They're all going to go together. Russia, China, and, of course, the Islamic nations going on, entering Syrian war, Russia and Iran see Mideast resurgence. Let me stop there for a minute, All right, Rexella. Jack. Iran is Persia of Ezekiel 38.5, and Persia changed its name to Iran in Iraq in 1932. I preached it and didn't know it yet, but here it's all happened. Certainly is all happening, Jack, and we're going to be naming other nations, and I'm going to put them on the spot and name some of those nations and see if they're in the Bible. The first one, Egypt, towards ISIS attack in the Sinai. And then ISIS gaining ground in Libya, warns American official, oh my. And then Turkish border on brink of becoming a Russian war front? Oh, that's so important. U.S. warns ISIS will speed up pace of global attacks. Oh, that's so sad. Speed up their pace. Oh, all right. Let's put Jack on the spot right here. He has already talked about Iran and Iraq, old oh, Persia. But let's go to Egypt, Jack. Daniel 11, 42. All right, Libya, Ethiopia. Uh, Ezekiel 38, verses 5 and 6, and Tagarma is Turkey. Oh, oh Tagarma, I was going yeah. to bring that up. Yeah. And then Syria. Oh, Syria, Isaiah 17, 1. Damascus, the capital of Syria, becomes a heap of rubble. 250,000 have already been slaughtered there, and there's much more ahead as 10 nations are beginning to come to that area for the greatest war in history, as we just read in this morning's paper. And then, of course, in Isaiah chapter 13 to 23, there are 11 more Muslim nations that come to the fore. And then when you get to Psalm 83, verses 5 and onward, there are another 10 or 15 nations, the Hagarites, all the tribes from Hagar, uh, who Abraham uh, brought into the world through Hagar. Now listen to me very carefully. Psalm 83, 4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. They said all of these 38 nations are going to try to obliterate and blot out a place called Israel. They hate the Jew. Well, Jack, I'm going to say, where will Israel really fit in? Will they fight? Are they going to give up or what? This next headline is very important as to where Israel really fits in. Take a look. Netanyahu, Israel fighting to the death against terror. Israel told, prepare for Armageddon and, yes, forget U.S. help. And then uh, Alexa, speaker, the slaughter of the Jews is near. Well, they're aiming for that. Khomeini calls for Muslim unity for Israel's annihilation. Well, we see their hatred toward them. ISIS video series encourages Palestinians to slaughter Jews. Palestinians confirm U.S. studying abandoning Israel at the United Nations. Oh, and how immediate is the threat posed by Islamic State to Israel, my oh my, there's a militant threatening uh, the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew people. And he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And of course, that's another of Jack's intelligence briefing. Jack, will Israel be destroyed? I like that last headline. Yeah. He that keepeth <clears throat> Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And the greatest enemy against Israel is the President of the United States of America, God forgive him. The Wall Street Journal carried the big article. The most anti-Semitic, anti-Jew president in history is Obama. God forgive you, my friend. The Muslims are having full control around that White House, according to Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son. Now, let's go on here for a second. Where does the Bible say the war is going to be fought against Israel? 18 times. Now, this is the war the latter years and the latter days, Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. Now, watch it. Here's all the different places in those two chapters mentioning Israel as the battleground of the world for Armageddon. Ezekiel 38. Verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. 
Ezekiel 39, verses 2, 4, twice, and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. You can't miss it. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob changed his name to Israel. 2 Kings 17, 34. Oh, what those people are going to go through. Israel shall be invaded, but the Bible says in Isaiah that they are going to be spared. And oh, if anything, God loves the Jew, Mr. President. The Lord did not set his love upon you, Israel, because you are more in number than any other people, but because he loved you. Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8. God says, they are my chosen. He says, they are my elect, Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, chapter 65, verses 9 and 22. Oh, I love this, Rex. Israel is my betrothed, my fiancé. I love them, just like the church is the bride of Christ. No problem. And he goes on to say in Jeremiah 3, 14, Israel is my wife. And he's not going to let them go down the drain. The biggest war is coming there. And you're going to see the armies of Iran and the armies of Russia. And all of them fall. One-sixth of their armies, Ezekiel 39, verses 1 and onward. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, Russia, the chief prince of that world area what a burial ground it's going to be, but not Israel. I will give Israel an everlasting name, Isaiah 56, 5, and the rest of the world is going to pay for what they're doing. Why? Because Jesus loves the Jew. He said, I'm going to be born. Do you know his name was not Jesus in heaven? Why? Because he was the second member of the Trinity, God from all eternity, long before Allah ever came along. He's not a prophet of Islam. He's our God and Savior. And in a couple of weeks from now, I'm going to show you 1,200 verses that God gave me. And I'm going to give you a lot of those verses. That Israel will always exist as the most powerful nation in the world. When Christ comes, he doesn't set his kingdom up in New York City. He sets it up in Jerusalem. I know I love this, Philippians 2.10, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth and every tongue. And I love what Franklin Graham said. That includes Muhammad's. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes. God shall give Israel an everlasting name, Isaiah 56, 5. They're going to reign in the world with Christ. And that goes on forever and forever and forever. And I'm going to tell you something. We are the rapture generation. 60 years I preached what you just heard. It took me a whole hour to do it in these crusades. Man, we really moved through it, Rexel. Praise the Lord. But what does it all mean? When you see all these things Jesus said, my coming is right at the door. Hallelujah. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. You're going to hear the words, Come up here to Revelation 4.1. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of their angel, with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, frighten one another with these no, no, words. No, 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 <laughs> no. Wherefore, comfort one another right. with these words. He's about to come. Get ready. Absolutely. Get ready. Are you ready? Have you recognized who Jesus really is? Have you asked him to come into your heart to be your Savior, to forgive you of your sins? Will you do that, please? As Jack prays this prayer of saying, Lord Jesus, thank you for coming, for being my Savior, for dying on the cross. Wash me in your precious blood and come into my heart. Will you pray that prayer with Jack right now? Jack. Amos 4.12, prepare to meet thy God. How? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending him. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for the shed blood to cover my sins and take them all away. Jesus, I receive you now. It's my own personal Savior. Come into my heart. 
thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer and coming into my life. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Oh, if you did, please write to me. I will send you this whole book, The First Steps in a New Direction, as soon as I hear from you. You know, we need to be walking the right path with the Lord during these days, don't we? He alone can bring peace in a troubled world and peace in our lives. Let me know if you accepted Christ. First Steps in a New Direction. We have a wonderful, wonderful offer for you that um, you really need to pay attention to an order in just a moment because it's Jack Van Impey answers 35 most outstanding questions about Christianity and Bible prophecy. You got some questions? You need to really have this because it'll answer all of them. And when you order this, I'm going to be sending you, will it happen this year? Oh my Oh, my, it could happen this year. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive Dr. Jack Van Impey's answers to the 35 most startling questions about Christianity and Bible prophecy. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck, and I just want to encourage you to make the call. You really need to have this wonderful offer, and don't forget, I'll be sending you a gift. The wonderful Will It Happen This Year, and of course, Jack is astounding when he goes right ahead and explains all the things in the Bible pertaining to the coming of the Lord. I want to leave you with a very, very good thought. Because the Lord is watching over us, I've said this before, we don't have to fear the dangers around us. Oh, how good to trust in the Lord. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very much.